Welcome back and uh, time for uh, medical ha uh, matters here on Morning Live and very, very important discussion this morning. Now, many girls across South Africa still do not have access to the human papilloma virus vaccine and this despite it being recommended by the World Health Organization. Now, the HPV vaccine is administered to girls aged 9 to 14 years old and uh, this is against a 90% of uh, cervical cancer uh, uh, cases that may develop later in their lives with HPV types 16 and 18 accounting for 70 percent of all cases worldwide. Now to talk to us more about uh, the school-based uh, human uh, papilloma virus vaccine administration for preteen girls we're now joined by Dr. Leslie Bamford who's a child health specialist at the Department of Health. Dr. Bamford thank you so much for your time and welcome Welcome to Morning Live. Uh, good morning. Thank you for having me and good morning to the viewers. Perhaps we could start at a point of, you know, just uh, explaining to us uh, what the HPV vaccine is and why it is administered to preteen girls and the importance of actually taking it. So the HPV vaccine uh, is a vaccine that uh, protects uh, people who get the vaccine against uh, HPV infection, uh, particularly uh, type 16 and 18. So we know that uh, women who have a chronic infection with HPV and particularly with those two types can many years later uh, develop uh, cervical cancer and that uh, is a leading cause of cancer in South Africa. Um, and it is almost entirely uh, preventable and, and treatable. So why do we target young girls? We, we know that uh, they have uh, very good immune systems. And so we want to uh, protect them uh, when they are young. So we uh, target girls who in grade five, um, who are usually uh, between uh, te uh, nine and, and, and 10 years old. Uh, the vaccine is only registered for use in uh, girls nine years and older. That's why we don't uh, target them at an even younger age. But we know if we can vaccinate girls at that stage of their lives, uh, they will have a very good uh, immune response to the vaccine. In the past, uh, we used to give two doses of the vaccine. However, we now understand that one dose uh, is sufficient to provide really good protection uh, against uh, HPV infection and thereby to prevent them from uh, developing cervical cancer, which would normally happen many, many years later. Uh, but if we can, as I say, if we can vaccinate them when they are young, we know that they will have a good immune response and they will be protected in the future. Uh, Dr. Bamford, uh, just how effective is it, um, you know, uh, the HPV, uh, HPV vaccine um, against preventing um, cervical cancer? Uh, because you said, you know, it, it, it is good, but what, what exactly is the efficacy rate of it? So we know that it's a very uh, effective vaccine. Uh, there is uh, evidence from other countries, particularly from the, the UK, uh, where girls, their vaccination uh, program started a little bit earlier than ours. And they have seen that in girls who are vaccinated, they have followed them up and no girls have developed uh, precancerous uh, lesions of the cervix. Uh, we also have some data from South Africa that was published last year that showed um, an 80% reduction uh, in uh, chronic HPV infections in uh, adolescent and girls and young women. Um, and, and that actually also uh, was not only in girls who were vaccinated, but also in girls who were unvaccinated. So we're seeing a little bit of a, of a herd effect. Um, but it is very good protection um, against the HPV 16 um, and 18 uh, subtypes, uh, which, as you indicated, do account for uh, most cases of uh, cervical cancer. So with regard to challenges associated uh, with uh, monitoring uh, this uh, school-based vaccination schedule, you know, uh, what are some of those challenges? Uh, because, 
we saw with uh, the of COVID-19 vaccine, for example, that uh, the anti-vaxxers, so to speak, were very vocal. Um, and not just that, but, um, you know, in other instances as well. So what are some of the challenges you face uh, with this particular administration at school? Well, we are very proud of our HPV vaccination program. So uh, it started in uh, 2014, and since then, we've vaccinated uh, over 4 million girls. So um, until uh, last year, we always uh, targeted uh, girls, uh, currently grade five girls, girl learners, in our uh, public and special schools. And we know that uh, each year we reach the vast majority of schools, at least more 95% of schools, and we vaccinate between 85 and 90% of those learners. Now, the main reason that we do not you know, reach the remaining girls in, in that target audience is that those girls do not have consent forms. Uh, to administer uh, this vaccination in schools, we do require that uh, parents give their consent. I must say that we don't always know if there is no consent form. Is And we think in the majority of cases uh, that's a logistic um, issue, the parents haven't been available or they have forgotten. But, but we do know that probably in a certain percentage of cases, parents have a declined the offer um, of vaccination. So, so that's something that we that we really have to uh, work to ensure that uh, parents are well informed, that they understand uh, the benefits of this vaccine, and that the systems are in place uh, to ensure that uh, parents are able to return the consent forms uh, to school. As I've indicated, we do usually reach around 90% of girls, so the vast majority of parents are understanding the benefits of HPV vaccination and are receiving and have been able to uh, return that consent form. Mm. Uh, the, the other issue then is around the fact um, that, as I indicated, uh, for the first uh, nine years of the program, we only targeted uh, public sector schools. So we have been missing out on the approximately 10% of girls who attend uh, private and independent schools. Uh, from last year, we have been uh, starting to offer vaccines uh, to those girls as well. Uh, it was early days last year, um, but we are hoping that later in the year, during the second round of the uh, HPV vaccination campaign, uh, we will be able to reach more girls in private and independent schools. And of course, uh, you know, with over 200 types of HPV viruses, Dr. Bamford, is it only girls that are immunized uh, with this vaccine? So currently, um, we only offer the vaccine to girls. That is in line with uh, World Health Organization uh, recommendations that, that the most important thing is to get good coverage uh, in girls. Um, a small number of countries do um, offer the vaccine to boys, and if we had um, unlimited resources, I think we would um, offer it to boys. Um, but currently, our main focus is to address uh, cervical cancer, and obviously, uh, for now, we are um, prioritizing um, girls. And it is likely that in the foreseeable future, we will uh, continue to prioritize girls. So, as I indicated, we are expanding to girls in private and independent schools, and we are also offering catch-up doses to girls up to 15 years of age. So, if a girl has, you know, missed their chance to be vaccinated for whatever reason, perhaps they were absent on the day or they didn't have a consent form, uh, in the second round, we are also trying to do what we call catch-up. So, to identify and to uh, vaccinate are girls who missed vaccination um, up until uh, girls who are 14 years uh, will be offered uh, one of those catch-up doses. Oh, what if someone is watching us right now and, and, and they're not sure, they can't remember whether their daughter, who is now within that uh, age band, 
actually did get the vaccination or not. Is there some type of record? Can they go and have a look? Or uh, is this something that uh, you can take a second dose of and be okay? How does it work? So, th so there's no danger in having a second dose or even a, even a third dose. I mean, previously regimens like that were, were implemented. I think um, the best thing to do is to ask your daughter. Um, I think most girls are, unlike with our, you know, our baby vaccinations, uh, most nine to 10 year olds will definitely remember if someone came to school and uh, gave them and their classmates an injection uh, in their in their left arm, so schools will have records. Um, we we do have registers, uh, but those are not uh, very easily um, accessible to the public. Uh, we are working on having more a better, a longitudinal record of uh, immunizations for for each uh, individual. Um, but I think for now, the best thing to do would be to ask the school or to ask your daughter. And of course, just finally, Dr. Bamford, if uh, you were absent, as you indicated earlier, or for whatever reason, uh, were not available on the day, uh, maybe when uh, the healthcare workers came to your school or you at a school that uh, did not receive a visit, maybe a private school, where can you go to have the uh, vaccine administered? So uh, currently, uh, the vaccine is obviously uh, available in the private sector, um, but then it has to be purchased um, and is uh, expensive. Um, as I've indicated, we do now uh, have allowance for uh, catch-up doses. So um, during the second round of the campaign, uh, Nurse teams, vaccination teams uh, will be coming to uh, our public sector schools again. Um, uh, and so the best thing would be to uh, speak to one, an educator and to get the details about when uh, the team will be visiting the school. And as I've indicated now, we do have um, allowance for uh, girls who miss doses All right. to catch those up um, until they are 14 years of, of age. Dr. Bamford, thank you so much. Uh, such an important conversation. Dr. Leslie Bamford, uh, child health specialist uh, with the Department of Health, talking to us about the safety and efficacy of administering the human uh, papilloma virus to girls aged 9 to 14 years of age in order to protect them from uh, cervical cancer later in their lives.